Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Grant for One Fair Review. It's been a while, but we are back to review the latest Isekai. Well, not really the most. The most recent is what I'm trying to say. It's it's not the latest because at this point it's, it's pretty old. Probably everyone's already talked about it, but I have not. But I really did feel the need to talk about Rising of a Shield Hero since it took up pretty much the whole year, or the as much as the year it's already been, for me to finish it. And uh, it left a big impact on me. The studio behind this is Kinema Citrus, which some of you might recognize, some may not. Really depends on how much anime you watch. They've, they've done a number of good things, as well as some bad, but it doesn't matter. Without further ado, let's get into the story summary. The four cardinal heroes are a group of ordinary men from modern day Japan summoned to a kingdom of Melromark to become its saviors. Melromark is a country plagued by the waves of catastrophe that have repeatedly ravaged the land and brought disaster to its citizens for centuries. The four heroes are respectively bestowed a sword, spear, bow, and shield to vanquish these waves. Naofumi, Iwatani, and Otaku becomes cursed with the fate of being the shield hero. Armed with only a measly shield, Naofumi is belittled and ridiculed by his fellow heroes and the kingdom's people due to his weak, offensive capabilities and lackluster personality. When the heroes are provided with resources and comrades to train with, Naofumi sets out with only one person willing to train alongside him, Malti Melromark. He is soon betrayed by her, however, and becomes falsely accused of taking advantage of her. Naofumi then becomes heavily discriminated against and hated by the people of Melromark for something he did not even do. With a raging storm of hurt and mistrust in his heart, Naofumi begins his journey of strengthening himself and his reputation. Further along, however, the difficulty of being on his own sets in, so Naofumi buys a demi-human slave on the verge of death by the name of Raftalia to accompany him on his travels. As the waves approach the kingdom, Naofumi and Raftalia must fight for the survival of the kingdom and protect the people of Melromark from their ill-fated future. Starring Ishikawa Kaito as Iwatani Naofumi, Seto Asami as Raftalia, Hiraka Rina as Firo, Uchida Maya as Melromark Melty, and many more that unfortunately I do not have time to mention or highlight in this video. I'm so sorry, but you guys can look them up on your spare time. I highlighted the four mains in my opinion. Anyways, getting to the actual show of Rising of the Shield Hero, I have to admit that's probably the longest summary I've ever done, but I think it gets the job done, and there's a lot to say about the show, and unfortunately there's so much that happens in this one season that I really can't condense it into a very simplified review. There's just so much that happens, so many plot threads. I mean, the one I just described about Naofumi, I already talked about that in a video I made towards the beginning of the year, and that was a long, long time ago. Since then, so much different things in the plot have started to appear and it's just it's just getting crazy or it got crazy and now it's even crazier since season one has ended and there will be a season two that being said how is the story of rising of a shield hero i have to be honest the story is great this is the main attraction for me usually when it comes to an anime there has to be a few things that grab me in order to watch it and when I first saw Rising of a Shield Hero I, I never really was interested in it I didn't think it looked great I was like uh, eh, it's an another isekai yeah whatever but then I started hearing a lot about the controversy behind it and the thing that people were always talking about which was the whole him being accused of you know sexually assaulting her which he never did and uh, you know I got into it that way and I, and it, and uh, apart from watching the first episode and then the second episode and all that, as the series went along, it just became a very interesting story with a lot of depth to it and a lot of not just charm, but just really strong writing. Weirdly enough, Rising of a Shield Hero is one of the longest anime I've ever watched because it feels like so much has happened and it's really, it hasn't been that long. It's only been... I believe 25 episodes so it's really crazy to think that they accomplish so much within those 25 episodes and uh, of course maybe they expand upon it in the novels or not the novels the manga excuse me and yes I do understand they've probably expanded upon it there but I watched the show and this was my introduction to it so as a story on its own I was really engaged and there was really nothing else uh, about the the other characters that were really bringing me to it, except for the main plot and Naofumi. Naofumi is one of the 
most interesting heroes I've seen in an isekai. You know, I, I'm, I've always said, I do not like the main character to be this perfect person. The, the, you know, I'm the best of the best. I gotta do this because I'm a, I'm a hero, you know. I, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm so torn, but I'm the good guy in the end. It's like, I, I, I'm sick of it. I don't care. There are very few times that that actually works where it's like, okay, the main character is a really good person, but I don't want to see that all the time. So I do like the more, I do like the more, uh, you know, isekai where the main character is just, is just shitty. That's probably why I liked ReZero so much. Like, the main character, Subaru, was just a, <laughs> he was not good at what he did. And Naofumi, while he is good at what he does, I do like it how he is just kind of this, bitter guy, this bitter person. It just made him more interesting to watch and his progression and this is one of the most satisfying shows that I've seen in terms of story mainly because every small victory was so satisfying. Just seeing him go from just this horrible man who everyone hated to being a respectable hero and uh, and towards the end, I, this may be a light spoiler, but people do like him and he does succeed in what he does and so many different things happen that it's just always satisfying. I'm not going to spoil everything in the show, of course, but... And quite honestly, I I had been watching a lot of stuff during this time, and the most satisfying thing I had seen was the end of this show. The last five episodes were pure magic, in my opinion, and I, I just had a really great time watching each episode after the next. And I was always invested in the story. I was always invested in the story of Naofumi, and I really wanted to see where he'd go from there. In terms of the other characters, I do like a lot of them. Uh, Raftalia, she's a great girl. I, I like Fido. I also like Melty. I, I liked, you know, them, but everybody else, I just, I just don't like. The other four cardinal heroes, the other three, I should say, they're just idiots and dumb and arrogant, and, you know, the rest, eh, they just kind of suck. Uh, Melty is evil, just absolutely evil, so evil to the point where I was like, they can't redeem her at this point. They really can't, after all she's doing. But of course, they're not the only characters. Other characters show up. Characters like Glass made the show even more interesting. Somehow, at the very end, they just, they leave it with that cliffhanger, and it's just amazing. A revelation happens, and it's like, oh god, now I'm ready for season two. Please don't take too long. I don't want to, I don't want another ReZero on my hands. One thing I do want to clear up, though, and it was a mistake on my part when I made the, the first video talking about Rise and Shield Hero, that I mentioned that this was my new favorite isekai. Now, I just want to clarify, that's not true. This is not my favorite isekai I've ever watched. I, I mainly said that for a title reason, and, and that's it. <laughs> I did not actually mean that. And uh, when I said that I'm tired of isekai, that is true. I am tired of isekai. But there is footage in that episode that I used that clearly shows isekai that I'm not tired of. You know, I already mentioned ReZero, which is a show that I love. I mean, I love more than this. And then Konosuba, which is another show I really love as well. What I'm trying to get at is, please don't misunderstand when I say that this is my new favorite isekai. I don't actually mean it's my new favorite isekai. It's one of them. Because again, the story was so engaging and just kept me at the edge of my seat. I just really badly wanted to see what was going on. And it's one of the most satisfying I've, I've seen to date. It's really good at that. All right, now comes the animation or the presentation, which is the animation and music. Uh, okay, this is where I'm torn. Unfortunately, I'm not a fan of the animation. The animation is fine. It is pretty good at times. At times it could be really good. At times it could be pretty, pretty good. But during the fight scenes, I was, I was never really into it, mainly because a lot of the fight scenes consisted of CGI. Other than Ufotable, uh, I, I really don't have hopes when I see CGI in, you know, battles uh, in anime. It just, it, it looks bad to me a lot of the time, and I don't like seeing CGI battles. And, you know, this, it doesn't, it's not horrible, mind you. The CGI is terrible, actually. You know, it's distracting when it comes up. But it, not every battle is bad. I, I find a lot of battles, the most engaging ones, were the ones where it was a lot of discussion and a lot of planning and strategy. Now the ones where it's just all out like warfare, it, those are the ones that uh, you kind of lose me because it doesn't look it doesn't look great, and that's my that's my big problem with this show. The animation is pretty good, but it's not great, and uh, you know, to some people I guess that could be a problem. I mean, it's not a big problem for me because the story was so good, but yeah, I could definitely see some people looking at the show and be like, yeah, the animation's not that good. 
In terms of the soundtrack, I, I honestly can't think of a single song or, or track from the show, so I have to say that the soundtrack's pretty forgettable, other than the intros and the outros. I can't say I remember anything other distinctly from the show. And I know maybe some people will say like, whoa, can you remember any songs from any anime you ever watch? Well, yeah, of course. If an anime is really good with a soundtrack, of course I'm gonna remember it. I mean, I remember most anime shows theme me songs because they just pop in in my head because they're so catchy. Here, I don't remember a single one. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but it, it does, it, uh, I, I have to admit, it does deteriorate from the experience when I can't, when the music's not good or the music's not there. But that being said, I do like the intro music. I do love the both uh, the first part and the second part. They were really good. So, to summarize the whole show, how do I do it? Well, unfortunately, I really can't talk too much about it. I, I love a lot of the story. The story is what got me invested. I loved the character of Naofumi. I liked his little posse that he got. I liked Raftalia. She's a great girl. I loved uh, Fido. Uh, Fido. Fuck. Philo. <laughs> um, I, I loved her. She was a very cutesy character. Now, uh, I gotta say, like, they weren't amazing, but, you know, like I said, the story is what really grabs you. The side characters, they're great, I like them, but they're not the best thing I've ever seen. The whole story is really what gets the show going, in my opinion. That's, that's why you need to watch it, the story. The story is great. There's no real gimmicks to this, because normally I would probably hate this type of isekai because it's a very generic fantasy world and there's no twist there's no like oh I'm, I'm a slime or something like that there's no like I'm a slime or I'm a piece of shit but I have a cell phone it, it, no there is no gimmick it's simply that hey this is just an isekai and that's it it's a video game and it's it's your pretty generic isekai but the story is really good and the character development is exceptionally well done so that's where a lot of my credit and a lot of what I love about the show comes from. Now, in terms of animation, I think it's pretty good. Uh, I can't say it's the best because the fight scenes, I could never get into them. They were very distracting to me. But there are a few ones that I thought were not entertaining, but uh, I was invested in. And again, that has to do with the story. Soundtrack, forgettable. I don't remember it uh, I, other than the intros and the outros. Uh, but yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, what can I say about Rising of a Shield Hero that anyone else hasn't said? It's a great show. The story is great. Characters are pretty damn great. Well written. I have to really compliment the writer. She did a great job. She uh, Not the, of the script, mind you, but of the original story. She did a great job. She's a very talented writer. And the script writer <laughs> is also very talented as well. I really have to give credit to the script of this show. It was really well done. And... I enjoyed it a lot. My final verdict for Rising of a Shield Hero is a 9 out of 10. It's a 9 out of 10 because I love the story. I thought the story was great. There are problems I have with it. I don't think it's perfect. It might not grab everybody's attention, of course, as I've seen, you know, and people who have seen it, if they're not grabbed by the story, there's not really much else for them to come for. But that being said, I do like the story. I liked the relationship between, you know, Raftalia and Naofumi. And really, Naofumi with everybody. Uh, Naofumi's relationship with everybody. I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm being very vague. But his relationship with everybody, I thought was very well done. And it's a very satisfying show. At the end of the day, if you want to watch a show that's satisfying, an anime that concludes its original arc, it does it here. It does it. Like I said... It's great. It has a great conclusion to a few arcs. Of course, it's going to have a season two. I hope it doesn't take long. But, like I said, it, it's really good as it is. As it is, really good anime. Do I recommend it? I recommend it if, if you like isekai. And if you have not watched many isekai, I recommend it. Now, if you have watched a lot of isekai, and you're sick of and tired of them, and you never want to see another one again, I can't say whether or not this will change your mind. But it is a good contender. I would say that if, if an isekai is going to change your mind, I'd recommend checking this out. Of course, it's not my first pick. Like I said in the beginning, this, I love a lot of isekai more than this one. 
And there are other isekai that are probably better than this, but the story was solid, and it was very satisfying. Well, that's my time for today, folks. Uh, have you watched the anime? If you have, let me know down in the comments down below. Did you love it, hate it, despise it, never want to talk about it, you even want to kill me from even mentioning it? Go ahead and let me know. I just want to hear your guys' voices on this stuff. You know, that's just how I am. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, which, why haven't you already? As always, I'm Grant for One for Review. I'll see you next time, and have a good day.